In today's video, I would like to check out a new plugin from PSP AudioWare. It's called PSP Oral Control. It is a tool for multi-channel tracking, mixing and mastering, and it is particularly useful for surround sound and immersive audio production, in particular Dolby Atmos production. And best of all, it is fairly inexpensive. Who would have thought? So let's check it out. But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Antoinette Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. And if any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. In that link is in the description below. And please also, if you get any value out of my videos, don't forget to press the like button. It helps out the channel and it makes these videos more visible. The video today is pretty much an extension to last week's video. In last week's video, I talked about Wave Spherex, which is a very similar tool. And I mentioned that there is this new plugin from PSP AudioWare called Oral Control that does similar things to Wave Spherex, but not exactly the same things. So the question is, can you use it in combination with Wave Spherex or can you use it as a replacement for Wave Spherex? But back then, uh, that plugin was not yet available for uh, regular digital audio workstations. It was only available for Pro Tools in AAX format. Now, as it turns out, PSP AudioWare released the VSD3 versions just a few days ago. So I felt this is the right time to also talk about PSP Oral Control and what it can do and what it can't do and how we can use it in combination with Wave Spherix. One of the more remarkable things about PSP Oral Control is its price tag. At the time I'm recording this, it is on sale for 39 bucks, which is very inexpensive for those of you who have been working in immersive audio or spatial audio for quite some time. You are aware that plugins in our field are extremely expensive or tend to be extremely expensive. So it's a nice pace of change to see a tool that's actually affordable. Now I'm going to post a link to the PSP Oral Control website in the description below. I encourage you to check it out. They have a 30 day demo and you can play around with it and see if it's something that fits your workflow. And with that being said, let's see what PSP Oral Control can do. Now the way I'm going to approach this today is the way I usually approach my videos and that is with a very simple project. I'm going to use Cubase today. I'm actually going to use exactly the same project that I used last week when we looked at Wave Spherex. I'm going to work on a Mac, but this really works on Windows as well, and it works on any digital audio workstation that is multi-channel capable. So let's have a look. So what I have here is essentially a very simple Dolby Atmos project. It's not necessarily the way you would normally set up Dolby Atmos. And uh, I explained that last week. I used the very same project last week. But essentially what I've done is I use three tracks, a synth track, a bass track, and a drums track. And I'm not really using them as objects in the Dolby Atmos project. I'm instead routing them into the Dolby Atmos bed. The reason for that is simply because I want to demonstrate the oral control plugin on the Dolby Atmos bed. And for that purpose, I need some action in the Dolby Atmos bed. So I'm really not working with objects today, I'm only working with the bed. The bed is a 7.1.2 bed and it is routed into the Dolby Atmos renderer, which sits on the Atmos bus, and that is a 7.1.4 track. Now, if you are new to Dolby Atmos and you would like to know how to set it up, I'm going to post a link in the description below where I walk you through the entire setup on how to actually set up Dolby Atmos and Cubase pro properly. For this video, we're not really going to worry too much about that. All we really need is a track that contains 7.1.2 audio and that's uh, essentially the bed. So let's add an instance of PSP oral control to a bed. And for that purpose, I'm going to open up the channel settings. Now I've already added PSP Oral Control in advance. So here we have it. So let's open that up. And what we have with PSP Oral Control is essentially a set of uh, channels that allow us to make certain adjustments to the, each individual channel, meaning that you can change left, right, center, LFE channel, and all the other channels independently. And the things that we can change are different to the things that we could change in Wave Spheric. So in that sense, these two uh, plugins are actually complement each other. So they have very little overlap, really. Uh, they kind of do two different things and they might actually be very useful in combination with each other. But let's first have a look at oral control. So what we can essentially do is we can obviously solo, we can mute, we can also change the polarity of each individual uh, channel. We can change the gain in each individual channel. 
Uh, we can change the high pass filter. We can add a high pass filter to each channel individually with either a 12 dB or a 24 dB roll off. So we can turn that on and then kind of set that accordingly. We can also add a low pass filter, which might be useful, especially on the LFE channel. And we do have the possibility of a time delay. So this is not a delay in the sense of an effect, but this is really a time delay that allows you to delay the signal that reaches the individual channels by a certain amount of milliseconds. And that can be used in order to open up or to widen the uh, the image that you're getting. Now, um, in order to uh, change to certain settings, we uh, either can uh, click on them directly and uh, essentially then it allows us to change these things. We can click on multiple channels simultaneously. So for example, if we want to change left and right channels simultaneously, I simply kind of select both and then essentially I can change both simultaneously. Um, I can also put the deselect, so this allows me to deselect everything. And I have a couple of buttons here that allow me to select a certain group of channels. So I can either select the front channels, um, I can select the side channels, I can select the rear channels, or I can select the top channels. And obviously, once again, I can deselect everything and whatever I have selected uh, essentially allows me to, to control that. So let me just set that, uh, let me just uh, reset that here. And uh, so let's have a listen on what we can do with it. So let's start our sound again. So one thing that we can do, for example, is we can solo certain channels. So let's solo the fronts. And then we can add a high pass filter, low pass filter. We can add a time delay. Now for the fronts, this might actually be useful, for example, if we want to widen the image. So what we can do, for example, is we can change the timing of the channel. So let's just change the, and I'm, I'm deselecting that for that purpose, the left and the right channel. And let's add a little bit of a time delay. What this will essentially do is it will give the the brain the impression that the left and right channels are further away from the center channel and therefore it will widen up the image slightly. Now obviously we have to be very careful about what we're doing. If we if we do it, overdo it with a with a time delay, it will essentially create a an effect that we don't really want to have. So if we want to if we are adding too much, obviously we are we're starting to hear the signal actually coming in twice. So this is most likely going to be only useful if you're kind of uh, having very, very small delays. So maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe five milliseconds or something. So let's deselect that again. Now one thing that we could do, for example, is we could, uh, because if we look at the top speakers, so let's just open up the, the top speakers here. Let's. We might feel that these are a little bit too loud, so we can actually bring them back a little. And if I'm remembering correctly, the sides are actually relatively quiet, so let's go to the sides. Yeah, so we might want to bring them back up, up a bit. To, to essentially give a little bit more of a three-dimensional impression. But the one thing I found particularly interesting is the way PSP AudioWare decided to approach the question on how to select individual channel groups. So in uh, PSP RO control, you have these buttons on the right that you can simply click. And if you click a button, you select an entire channel group. Now this is very simple, uh, but also very straightforward and very easy to use. And I found that uh, very, very convenient, much more convenient than what Waves did with Wave Spherix. And uh, in order to understand what I'm talking about, let's just open up an instance of Wave Spherix. Now I've already put uh, this spherix onto the Atmos bed. So I ju I'm just clicking on that and opening it up. Now with wave spherix, you do have pretty much the same options. The main difference though is that um, there are two different ways on how you can select the channel group. You can select it either in exactly the same way, which is uh, done in PSP oral control, or you can select it as what they call a channel group. And that essentially means that the entire group will default to whatever is uh, the left is, is set on the leftmost channel in that particular group. And well, this gives you a lot of control um, and this might be actually a, an advantage in certain situations. I found that a little fiddly, um, you know, kind of I sometimes would uh, 
I just kind of threw away certain settings in the uh, in individual channels just because I clicked on the channel button and everything defaulted to the leftmost channel. So so while this is actually to some extent uh, nice to have this control, I found that to be a little bit not as usable as PSP oral, oral control. Now I should also mention that these two plugins do completely different things and uh, they are actually, they almost have no overlap really. Uh, with PSP oral control, what you can do is you can control the gain, the individual gain of each individual channel. You can control the low pass filter, high pass filter, a time delay. You can control polarity. Whereas with Wave Spherix, uh, you really have a compressor and limiter. So you can uh, compress and limit individual channels in your 7.1.2 signal. And, and therefore, these two plugins actually complement each other. They, they can, I, I think they actually should be used together as a starting point for a mastering chain that you can use on your Adobe Atmos bed track. So what's my final verdict? Now, I already said that I really like the Wave Spherix because it's a tool that um, I haven't really seen anywhere else. And the same thing applies to PSP oral control. I think this is a very useful tool. Anybody who's working with uh, immersive audio, with surround sound, with Dolby Atmos, with MPEG-H, I think will benefit from that particular plugin. It is not expensive at all, so there is no reason not to pick it up. That's actually a really, really nice thing. So I really highly recommend that. If you are interested in Dolby Atmos, if you're interested in immersive audio, this is probably a, a, a plugin that you, that you should have in your toolbox. And this is really everything I wanted to say today. Thanks again for watching. And once again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below or join my Discord community. And with that being said, see you at the next video.